Hello, this is Ross, and welcome to a game of Maurice. Um, I'm recording this in my car, don't worry, I'm not driving. Parked up, just dropped someone off, and uh, putting the time while they're uh, in there. Uh, we were going to play at the club, but it's been used as a polling booth. So, as you might guess, it's May 2015. So we moved back to my studio, and uh, my old friend Roger bought along some figures, set them up, and had a quick game there. We worried about time after moving around and everything, so we actually reduced the break point uh, by a quarter. So the size of my arm at break on 18, so we reduced that to 30 and a half, rounded up 14, just to speed the game up. Um, interesting consequences. Well, I'll run through the armies, how the game went, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. I'll, I'll see you in my face on one of these. Okay, so there's the, the cover of the book, I'm sure you're familiar with. It's a beautiful book. And I, I like to write rules and study rules, and I have to say it's beautifully written. It's a real joy just to read through. Humour, very clear, very good. <laughs> right, here's my army. Now I have a simpler way of building the armies, which you might find useful if you play this game. The way it works is you have a conscript, foot, Four points each, regulars, four, six points each. Guard, interesting, the first one is eight, or elite, sorry. The first one is eight, the second one is nine, and ten, then eleven. Artillery, first one is one, second one costs two, third one costs three. And then you've got irregular units, which I think are three points, whether they're foot or mounted. Then you either have a, a foot army, which means at least one third has to be cavalry, or you have a cavalry army where one third has to be foot. Uh, see, I'm going to complete free range, which is pretty easy. Doing the mask, then you get 100 points. Now, also after this 100 points, you get the National Advantage card, which I'll touch on, which is the bonus things that your army can do. Better at marching, better at shooting, all that kind of stuff. It's what gives the game an extra bit of flavour. It's very useful if you're doing historical games. What we've done with this game, most of our games, we've just gone for a free choice pick what you like. There's only one card in there which is to do with rallying which I find too powerful, it can actually distort the game uh, so we leave that one out. So the way I work out my points I base my whole army on being the regulars, which is 6 points each so as you can see here 15 of those, 6 points each is 90 the conscripts are 4 points each, so all I do then is put in a minus 2 for how many of those I'm having. So obviously 2 of those is minus 4 the elites, the first one's plus two, the second one's plus three, so that's five on top of my total. Two lots of artillery, which is more or less using up the change, really. Artillery, unless you have a lot of it, is not too helpful. I think that it would be better if you could activate it with the infantry, because then you could move it around, it doesn't get requiring a separate activation. Anyway, come to that another time. And then out the many are national advantages, I've chosen cadence, which is six points. So there's my 100 points. I've gone for a foot army, so five are mounted, including the one conscript, so not particularly powerful cavalry. And so in my foot, that will leave 10 units, nine of which, sorry, 10 units, eight of which are regulars, two of which are elite. I don't have Roger's list, but it was uh, a little bit different because um, he went for lethal volleys as well, which is 12 points. It is very powerful. You re-roll all your disruption, which is kind of like your to, to, to wound roll in other games. And um, makes very powerful for shooting. But it is 12 points, so I went for two extra units of regulars. And uh, as the Russian generals say, quantity has its own sort of quality. <laughs> and you can see the details on cadence, the one we've both gone for. Very useful, because you can march up in column and immediately deploy to line. Uh, instead of having to turn and being vulnerable in column, you might get jumped on. Uh, in this game, column moves dramatically quicker than line. It's very useful to be in column if you can be. Uh, right, ignore the troops that are on the table. What we're doing here is going through the placing of terrain. A great system. Uh, the sets of cards, different types of terrain, tropics, plains, I can't remember the rest of them now, wilds, I don't know, whatever it is. But the card on it will give you uh, limits to each type of scenery you can place. So we got Tropics. I should have put a picture of the card on the screen. There we go, never mind. And so with the Tropics, you're allowed, I think it's a couple of rivers, lots of forest, 
uh, hill, one town, that kind of thing. Uh, the pieces of paper you see stuck down the middle, they are an interesting terrain placing option, which if you put those down, that means nothing can be placed on those areas. They're clear terrain. So I'm the attacker, and I've gone for those to open the way to his town, which I've also placed. So I placed the first piece, I plonked the town straight in the middle, and I've made sure there's a clear run-up, and I've got for a very blunt approach here, just going to march down the middle and try and overpower with weight of numbers. There's a lot of finesse usually in Maurice, not a lot of finesse in this one, <laughs> just to warn you. Okay, so there's more terrain starting to appear. Uh, you can see the town in the middle, that church we're fighting over. There's a rough field on the left. Far left is a wood, we should have put some trees on that, but it's so far wide, didn't really come into it. Roger's trying to funnel me into the centre, into his qual quantities. You can see the placing of uh, terrain there. I, I, I wonder if one in the middle might have been more useful, just to break up my attack. But uh, that's the way it's gone anyway, so that left flank's looking pretty safe, with the artillery parked behind it as well. Ah, the hands of one of my little boys appeared, he was watching. Right, so we've deployed. Now you can see Roger's got his infantry in line, filling the top middle of the table, over to, to the left. The artillery right out on the far left. Uh, play an awful lot of part in the game over there, I don't think. But it has made sure that flank is safe, and his cavalry is guarding the other flank. Three units in column at the top of the table. Only so many can be in column if you're the defender. And they're going to fill in the gap, I guess, acting as a reserve for him. My army, load of infantry all in lines, cavalry to the right, artillery in the middle. Off to the right a bit. I do re regretted that later because it's hard to get them into the game. There we are, artillery, as I mentioned before, unless you've got a lot of them, aren't the major factor in this game. Okay, we have a close up of uh, Roger's deployment. Some artillery on the left, infantry. And there's the right flank with the cavalry in their uh, en masse formation. Here's my columns. And there's my cavalry over on the right hand side. This extra picture, my little boy took it. Thought they looked great. <laughs> Gave him the camera. He loved these. I didn't paint these. Just, uh, <laughs> he really liked them, so there you go. Yeah, nice flag. Uh, you can see them. Um, I don't know which countries, armies they are. I think Roger's got the Prussians and I've got the Austrians, that's right, from his collection. Uh, Alright, so we start moving. Uh, you can see this green and white uh, sort of ruler that Roger's made. They're very useful. Because all movement and measurements is done in base widths. So I think Roger's figures. Gosh, I should know this. I think 40 millimeters it looks like. So in column, you can move 12. So what I've done there, I've right angled the ruler. So they've gone forwards eight. They sort of swung around to the left, the last four. Because when they change the line, they just turn 90 degrees. So you have to allow for that. So it's very much captures the flavor of the period. We march in columns, march across in front of your enemy, and then turn to face in the line. There we are. My little boy still taking pictures. Is uh, more of me, <laughs> and usually on my reports. The army's advanced, no subtlety today. The infantry just piled down the middle, and they're going to enter a shooting match, and I'm hoping superior numbers will beat volley fire. There's the great man himself. Ooh, seems to be a lot of extra random pictures today. That's what happens when you hand out your camera. You can see there, two armies starting to get together. It's going to be straight in. Very quick game, this one, from that point of view, getting stuck into each other. Some games you can manoeuvre around a lot. We've gone almost a whole game without shooting sometimes, trying to get the advantage. Very different style today. Right, no views, so you can see the overall deployment. Uh, you notice my army got the supporting lines there. I'm hoping for interpenetration of lines as one of my cards. And what that means is you can, as it suggests, you can move through line or column without getting the usual one disruption for doing so. If you haven't played this game, hits and disruptions through manoeuvring or something are the same. You take five hits, the unit's destroyed. So you can you can go down quite quickly. There is also the chance to uh, rally as an option. So far, all I've done is move up, get ready to shoot. 
and this did surprise me. Turn one, Rogers advanced to meet me. Obviously very keen to get the firefight started. Not quite sure why he did that. Advanced him out the line with the rest, but there you go. Feeling confident with his superior Prussian musketry. Here's a quick glance of my uh, hand of cards. Which you can pause and have a proper read of to get an idea of the, how the cards work. The one I'm most interested in is a passage of lines you can see at the middle there. Which will let me... My plan is to engage, shoot, shoot, shoot as long as I can. And then I'll interpenetrate or passage of lines to get the fresh units to the front. They will shoot, shoot, shoot. Hopefully enough to kill him and then I can rally them back up again for a while. But a quite good hand of cards. If you haven't played before, the number in the top left hand corner is sort of command range for your general. So if your general is, uh, say, eight base widths away from the, the command you want to move, you'd have to use eight points of cards. It could be two fours or an eight. So if you keep your general near at least one end of the command, you use up smaller cards. Part of the fun of the game, because if you read those cards, all of them are potentially useful. And yet, you're going to have to use them to move the army around. So as you can see on the right, starting to engage. So, uh, Rogers bosh thick smoke on me. If you can, hopefully you can read that. Uh, effectively means I'm hitting on uh, fives instead of fours. Which made quite a big difference as it turned out. Oh, there you go, a close-up. So I'm not sure if I got both sets of photos in because um, uh, we forgot about the card. I rolled handfuls of fours converted them, destroyed I think, both units. <laughs> That's how I was picking the, the card up to put it back on the pile. I think, hang on, Rog, we've got this. So we rolled the whole lot again. <laughs> and um, sod's law. How do you hit a thing? <laughs> and I say honesty is the best policy. Oh dear. Right, so the red dice there, so what you do, are there a number of hits? So you can see Roger's had to split his fire on the right and the left. So I think it's uh, uh, you got a better view than I have, like 2, 2, 1. He then rolls to convert. This is where the quality of the troops comes in. If you're trying to convert hits against elites, you need 5s. Against regulars, you need 4. And against militias, you need 3s. So it's easier to beat up the lower quality troops. Rallying, shooting, everything else, all the troops act in the same way. So it's not a huge advantage, but it's surprising how useful it becomes, especially in hand-to-hand uh, -hand fighting. See the markers, the ones that Roger's converted. Those little numbers are now permanent hits on my units. So you will need some sort of counters like that. Look at that, I've done five on the unit on the right. If I could convert all five of those, they're dead. Yeah, four and two. Hang on. Yes, this is the pictures when I was hitting on fours. <laughs> Didn't go so well on fives. There you go. Yeah, we're going to take one off. Anyway, uh, I can't remember what the hits were, but not as many. Right, so Roger's bringing up those columns. You see how fast they move? They go a long way. And you can change them immediately to line. And you can try and get close enough to make that into one command. Looks too far away to me, so I think he's going to have to push them up again next turn to make it into one command. So his units are outnumbered. They're getting beaten up. So he's decided to skip the volley phase to explain to those who haven't played. At the beginning of each turn, you decide... Is there going to be a volley phase? If there is, every unit in range on the table for both sides shoots. And you shoot first. But the enemy shoots back. Now in this situation, I've got, I'm overwhelming the, the two units that are isolated on uh, Roger's left flank as he looks. So he said, no, no, no volley phase. So I played this card. I said, yes, we are having a volley phase. Just to try and finish them off before he brings up reinforcements. So you can see the hits. A couple of ones on me and I've done very little again. These guys are so hard to kill. <laughs> and I've tried to bring my cannons up. If I can get them into the shoot at firing line, they would activate every volley phase. They'd be very useful. But partly, I'm not thinking what else I can do, really. Situation says I want it. I'm in a firefight, two units, I've got three. As soon as I get worn down, I'll bring in, you know, swap them over with some fresh ones. I think I'm winning that side of it. And uh, Roger plays um, Deadly Fire. 
I was very small on when you're doing the editing on these and first fire so as you can see what the effect of those are one you steal initiative and get to shoot before the other person deadly fire is on plus ones and he's got lethal volleys now he's starting to do some damage as you can see my guys threes and twos I've got them on fours that just one more hit and I destroy two this is one of those decisions you have to make then I think well, if I go for the volley phase get a couple of hits I can get rid of both of those I've also gone for the so sorry I think this must be Roger's card he's gone for the heroic rally which means you get rolled two dice for every casualty and he rallied off just about everything so I got him down to fours I think it's going to be going well he's rolled well and I've lost a unit they are first blood to the enemy and they got very close you can see them blazing away at each other on the right hand side bit of a static game this one a lot more movement in most games of Maurice and again I'm taking up to threes and twos this time and I've rallied off all my chits apart from the dead unit of course and boom I used to kill one of those or both of them I think so I really feel like uh, numbers are starting to tell here they're starting to put some pressure on I'm feeling quite confident because what I should have done I think is maybe just take my time now and collect cards because you build your hand and the more you attack your cards get used up this is the fun of the game you never seem to have enough cards to do everything you want to do so we're into more shooting again my cards are in the middle or elites so I put the mounted guys to mark the elite units on my side and we pound away each other it's a bit of a static game this one there's a lot of pounding away as you saw earlier in my hand I played the passage of lines jump my guys in and I think I'm just going to do it wait the numbers so I'm waiting to see if uh, Roger can find some initiative somewhere to try and uh, save it because it's going numbers are going to tell eventually as an example of one of the cards a 16 pointer okay so now he's down to, uh, so those two units are on their own have gone I'm pushing up starting to engage the town itself oh yeah I should have mentioned this the objective of the game is to take the town in the rules I think you have to hold it to the end of the game but we say if you hold it for a full turn that's good enough otherwise the game's uh, it's very hard to win as attacker which just reminds me attacker is supposed to get extra units uh, I don't mean one more unit but uh, might make a big difference forgot about that <sighs> right show no fear so it's another way of modifying the rallying rallying in this can be overwhelming sometimes you roll well keep play a few bonuses very hard to destroy units there you go as an example another card Roger seemed to have all of these all those shooting modifiers so this firefight was really suiting him and as he's got the the, the volley national advantage as well he's re-rolling all the disruption so even though I'm outnumbering they're really starting to hurt these uh, encounters see lots of numbers on mine as well and I'm having to spend time rallying which if you rally you can't push units forward to try and keep the pressure on there's another one, I'm on minus ones to hit this time so normally you hit on fours thick smoke makes fives if you've taken two or more disruptions or wounds on a unit there's another plus one suddenly you're hitting on sixes it's difficult, whatever your numbers so it's a bit of an attritional Yep, and here comes another unit off. He's rolled two hits, converted them both. Surely numbers are going to break through event. So we're kind of dug in and pounding each other. Okay, an example here, just discarding a court card, which is never really going to use in this game. So it's the four points to activate. I'm trying to drag my cannons up gradually overwhelming that flank I feel very confident if we just keep going like this I should be able to break his army before I lose too many units boom, boom, boom. ok examples wish I could remember why those dice are so significant <laughs> two more hits trying to convert them take that three to a five and take it off that might have been it 
Also, as you can't quite see on here, I'm starting to do some hits on the town. Hitting things in the town is very difficult. I think it's plus one on the difficulty level, and you have to re-roll all hits. So effectively you need a double five, or a double six if you're on two wounds. So it gets tough, but you know, we're starting to get there. A lot of dice flying that way. Okay, you see he's rolling a lot of hits. He's really starting to uh, bash me up on the right. There's still numbers. I've just got to rally for a turn, passage of the lines, get the fresh guys to the front. Just throw more dice, should win. Got on four again. I'm on four. We're both trying to rally, trying to get the kills. Different style of game to the usual, but it gets quite interesting as you're trying to manage your resources. Yeah, look at that. He was on four. I remember this bit. Roll four hits. Anyone converts, that unit's gone. Because five hits is destroyed. Four, four twos, not even four misses. <sighs> Why do we play games with dice? Anyway, got them the next turn. So now he's got one unit isolated on the right. Now the way that it works in Maurice is you can only activate one command per turn. So now suddenly he's got... It's quite difficult. He either activates... Infantry on the one side, or the other side, or the garrison, or the cavalry. Can't combine them very easily. Whereas my infantry are one large block. So I send one order, the whole lot can do it. So that unit on the far right is looking very vulnerable now. It's outnumbered. Starting to put some pressure on the buildings. Not being shot back, why not? Let's quick overview for you to catch up. Now Rogers wheeled these in from the left, and I've, I don't know, it's a bit close and I made a bit of a mistake, because the unit I've got most up front on the left hand side was designed to be in range of the town, but out of range of his infantry, I don't know if I nudged it too far or whatever, but it was decided to be just in range. So suddenly I've got one exposed unit. You really want a linear formations work best in this, because now suddenly the garrison and two units of foot are all blazing away at one unit. Stuck in it, sticking out like a like a proud nail. So try and avoid that, and try and get support as well. So you can always interchange, especially if you get passage of lines card. You don't even get the disruption. So he's measuring them. They're all just in, so they're going to get a proper pounding. Boom. Sure enough. Uh, Good news, well I think this is my shooting dice, one of those turns we roll four hits, all four convert, and they've taken up one of his as well. <laughs> you have to enjoy the good moments in dice games. So on the right is one unit, it's hanging out really well, blasting away at those. Going to wear it down, my unit on the left still hanging in there, bizarrely. But you can see I have lots of fours, so I'm really forced to rally. It's a good time to rally if you've got lots of fours around most chance of getting the pips off. When you rally, you roll one dice for each disruption on the unit, so four in this case. And you're trying to roll uh, four plus. So four dice you want to get the rallies if you're on a one. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but that's how it works. If you have the rally card, you re-rally all fails. This is the national advantage I mentioned earlier, the one we don't use. And it, it really is almost impossible to kill units. You know, you're trying to get fours. You're re-rolling. You may even have a card which gives you a plus one or something. You're going to get rid of at least, you know, you get at least half, sometimes all of the disruptions, and it's back to square one again. So place any views on that. There we are. Another bag of dice missing. Gone for the rally. <laughs> oh, this is it, yes. They're on four. I want to rally off those four points quickly before he shoots them. None rallied off at all. Back to the right hand side, I've rallied a few off mine, he's on, f well, I don't know, he's struggling there. It's two against one, it should be a straightforward slam dunk. There we go, and of course he's rolled a handful of deadly damage. <laughs> yeah, games with dice, I can't quite finish him off over on the right hand side, but eventually that's going to go. And of course they were stuck, I managed to rally a couple off the next turn, but they're on their own, outnumbered. It's a bit of a mess. The problem is the unit just behind them can't go forward without 
having to penetrate them or push them back. They've got nowhere back to go. As soon as you start doing angles and corners, you've really got to put more care into it than I usually do. Otherwise you end up in a situation like this. Unit getting shot to bits and I can't get it out because it's stuck in there. Now here's one of the fun cards. Because really I'm sitting there thinking, oh, this is going fine. I'm just, numbers are telling. Start to win on the right. Going to win on the left. Couple more units destroyed. His army breaks. The town's starting to go as well. Or I could just take the objective. So two ways of winning. So I'll have a bit of fun. There's some great cards in this game. Some of them very funny. This one's a favourite. You march one of the enemy's units in any legal way. So basically, pick pick a unit on the enemy's side and, and march him forwards, which takes him out of command of the rest of it. So if, so if someone's got a long line, you take the middle one out, and suddenly it becomes three commands. So it's another reason why it's important to have a support line, because units have to be within two base widths to count as being part of the same command. So if you've got a line behind a line, just having one pulled out of the front is still all linked via the, the rear line, if that makes sense. Uh, the only one that's going to be out is the one that's come running forwards because of one of these weird cards. And then the next turn you move everyone up to catch up with them and there's no real harm done. If you're a single line, one gets taken up in the middle, you've now got three commands because the two, two remainders aren't linked. So it takes you at least two turns to push them up. It can be a real pain. Supporting lines are good in this. Very clever game. Makes you uh, at least attempt to do the sort of right things. Anyway, so the fun we have here. So this chap has come running forwards, as you can see on the left hand side. But I haven't got the best setup. Ideally, you want two or even three units all lined up to shoot it. It's a bit of me, frust not frustration, the game's okay, and I was, I was winning it. It's just um, I, I like to be very active player get things moving and I was statically just shoot 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 I should have just collected the cards and carried on but this is fun we're gonna blast him up anyway the right hand side come on two against one I've got my elite units in the middle let's finish those off on the left there we are just need two hits of course three three one one I don't get any at all and <laughs> his, his confused unit are um, winning the firefight out number two it's to one or on the right again Oh, hang on. Yep. I think i um, getting nowhere. So I've decided, instead of just being patient and staying there and just keep winning by firefight, I thought partly as well to show how a melee works, we charged in. So we go through how the, the melee, dice, melee dice work. The base strength of a unit, and then you get um, pluses according to the bonus cards you play. And you get a minus if you're um, you got more hits than the enemy has. And you get a further minus if you're outnumbered. So uh, I have to admit, let Roger work out a lot of this. But I think the way it works is I've gone in with sixes. Well, you see all the dice on the table in a second. So we've charged this guy. He's got more hits than I have, so he goes down one to five. I'm on six. We're going to roll a one dice each and add it to these totals. But also with the advantage of playing in more card. So I add this in my hand. All regular units get plus two to their combat scores. One of the reasons I wanted to charge. Because Rogers counted it, hold the line. So he gets plus two as well. So not the advantage I was hoping for. So there you go. So my guys just realised I had elites there on the left of those two. I think elites get an extra um, plus two or something. Maybe it's cancelled out by having hits on them. But anyway, the way we ran it, my, my elites have got in with eight points. One's on the right, six. They were on five. So it becomes seven. And he's on five, that's going to get a plus two as well. Have we got all the dice showing in a second? Yep, on this side, same sort of thing. We've both got the plus two, so the advantage hasn't really changed. It just makes it diffi more difficult to double someone if you're both on pluses. Okay, got the rules in front of me. Just make sure I get this right. So what happens is their trained units have a value of six, conscripts four, and elite units have a value of eight. So I did myself out of a couple of points there. Didn't make any difference as it turned out. Right, then if your national, I'll just run through the rules. If your national advantage is 
permit, you can have a plus one in combat for going as a massed formation, like sort of attack column. A higher elevation, you get a minus one you know, if the enemy's higher. You get a minus one modifier for each disruption marker on it. We haven't played for a while, I'm not sure we got that exactly right, but uh, Rog usually does. Uh, minus two if you're even partially in bad terrain. Minus two for attacking enemy in cover. And the extra one, a negative modifier for being outnumbered. And it's minus one for each one. So that's why he went. So he should have gone really from six outnumbered to five. His disruption, four. Plus two for his thing would have been six, plus what he rolled, nine. My guards were eight, plus two for charging, ten. Minus two disruptions, eight. Oh, there we are. So it must have been eight. Must have rolled a one. Anyway, that's how it works. So what you do is you resolve the passive units first. So that's the defender, effectively. If engaged active units' combat scores are greater than but not double the passive unit score, the passive unit suffers two disruptions. So, yep, he's beaten there. If it's broken, you remove it from the table. All other passive units whose scores are equal to or greater suffer one disruption. Again, break if that removes them, rem if that breaks them, remove them from the table. And then you do the attacking units. An active unit receives two disruptions if any defending units that were engaged against it and still on the table scored equal to or higher than its score. Again, if this gets to five, remove it from the table. Otherwise, receive uh, one disruption. Fall back. All attackers still in base contact with the enemy now fall back. If uh, an active unit is no longer in contact with the enemy, it does not fall back, even if it was within one base width and or engaged with the enemy. So, I haven't done enough to break him, so both my units will fall back with one disruption. He's taken two disruptions. Same sort of situation over here. I've got enough points to win the melee, but not to break him. So he's going to take two, I take one. So as you can see the outcome on the right, might be easier if I swap those two slides around. He's taken two disruptions, I've taken one each. It That wasn't a sensible thing to do. I just The other thing, if you attack, you don't get any new cards, so you start using your hand up. If I just rested or something, or rallied even, you know, resting, gaining a couple of extra cards. Three, I think. Uh, rest, uh, ra rallying, you get two extra cards. So I built my hand, just carried on shooting. There you go. Filled my in, uh, impetuous roll. Okay, so those two hits were enough to kill those. Yeah, you did it the hard way. Blasting each on the left now. And the building kept throwing quite well against the building there. Just get one per turn, one per turn, one per turn. It's up to four. One more, and the garrison's destroyed. So there we are, it is possible. So I'm thinking now the game's pretty much over. I think he's about one or two units off breaking. The garrison could go, and I could storm the, the village, which would be undefended, which is one way of winning. Break his army, another way of winning. My army's looking very solid. Uh, Roger's going to try and bring up the cavalry just to try and uh, do something for the end of the game. He's measuring out there. You can see that that's near enough. Just well, within 16. So to order that cavalry, he's going to use 16 points of cards to do that. Yep, so you see, 16 points needed. And if he had any larger cards he could have used, but he's gone 4, 4, 4, 4. 16 points. And the cavalry's coming around the, the flank to start changing the game. This is where I um, normally see a lot more of this in the game, Maurice. So it's part of desperation, because cavalry, very difficult to beat formed infantry. So he's come charging in, but he is outnumbering two to one. My guys have got pips on them, so it's uh, looking tough for my guys there. Let's get a lot of good rolls. Oh, also a quick chance to mention one of the notables. We drew two each. They didn't play much part in this game, apart from this guy who's a cavalry commander. The unit to which he's attached adds plus one to combat score when charging. So that was a useful little bonus, well used. There's lots of these notable cards. Some are very funny. Uh, you have to use them. Mine were useless. I even had one who controls irregulars. And I have none in my army, so there you go. 
So again, we sort out the melee. His guys are on six. Apart from the one with the the, the officer, you can see the extra figure there, James. He was a seven. <laughs> My guys. Oh God, it must have been them. Um, sorry, they're six. I've got three pips. Takes me out at three, and they're outnumbered. So I think I should be on two, not one. Although uh, Roger explained to me why it should be one. Either way, one or two. One dice each added to that. They're not going to be there anymore. So I hold a one, yeah. So I'm on two. Ouch. So they disappeared. So suddenly I remembered. I'm a bit near to the breaking point in the thought, because we are playing the, the three quarter rules on the break points rather than the full break points, just to make sure we get a result. And I should have had a close count of exactly how many points I had left. It's a bit closer than I thought. And over here, um, start to lose more casualties. So, I still think I'm... So one of the best cards in the game, in my view, coordinated. You get to activate two commands instead of just one. So I came up with a very clever plan. And the idea is, bring up the artillery and bring up the cavalry. The idea being, if the cavalry charge again, I get one shot in at close range with the canister and um, make a hole in those cavalry if they decide to charge me, and then my cavalry can counter charge and smash through them. Because all my cavalry are all lined up and should overwhelm them. Possibly one of the most stupid plans I've had for a long time. Although there is good competition for it. So you just charge the guns, they don't shoot. Artillery have um, come a value of two. He's had to charge the infantry to get the, his front unit out of the way. He doesn't expect to win that well, though. Actually, my guys are pretty beaten up with a few pips on them already. You see that blinking plus one commander there? There you can see. So he's on six. My guy's down to three because due to the three hits on them. Two guns are on two. Suddenly, it's a bit of panic stations. My idea of grape shotting him has not really worked. What I should then, of course, is bring the cavalry up this turn. The next turn, in the coordinated move with the guns protected by the cavalry. Hmm, made a bit of a mess of this one. I also realised I'm only about four or five points off breaking. When a unit breaks, it's worth either one, two, or three points. As a little table, which I'll show you in a second. So, if all three of my units break, unless I can roll something like three ones, there's a good chance the whole army's gone. Yep, so we roll the dice, first of all, to resolve the melee. Yep, losing, lose two points. Artillery only get two points. Next artillery, yep, they've been thrashed. Doubled, they're broken anyway. Infantry lose two points, they're on three, so that's five, so they've broken all three gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, just so easy, wasn't it? There's the table. So as you can see, regulars, between one and three. See, if I had rolled ones with the artillery, they would have cost me none, but I didn't. For <laughs> a whole, whatever it was, an average set of rolls, whole army broken. And came to Roger. <laughs> ah, it's good fun, but a little bit stupid ending. Ah, dear, dear, dear. Ah, so there you go. Uh, very unusual game, this one. Um, I hope it's not too misleading if it's the first time you see Maurice. Because normally the game's far more about manoeuvre and balancing trying to move different commands at different times. Was this a bit more of a static bat in the middle? I better go and answer that phone. Good time to end. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments. And I'll be back soon. So there you go. A little bit of an unusual game by Maurice. So if it's the first time you've seen this game, I hope it's not too misleading, because normally the game is much more about manoeuvre and the fact you can only activate one command a turn. You get a lot of fighting on one flank and you're desperate to get back to that flank to finish off the melee, whereas you get call off somewhere else and it's about seizing initiative and forcing your opponent to activate units that he'd rather not be activating because there's something else he'd rather be doing. 
So a little bit unusual game, but introduce to some of the mechanics. We'll be playing again more soon, and uh, I'll also be doing a quick review of the rules. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments. More welcome as always, <laughs> even uh, not so positive ones. <laughs> so, okay, thanks a lot, and uh, catch you soon.